Hello and welcome to solutions video number five, or number four, pardon me. This is about solubility graphs and curves. Uh, before we do that, though, I want to jump backwards to one thing. I want to see if this works. Um, I don't know if ooh, it's going to let us record a recording. This is a super saturated solution about to happen. This solution is super saturated. What that means is it's got more solute than it should be able to hold at the temperature it's presently sitting at. And this gentleman who you can sort of make out in the reflection is about to place a splint or plastic device that's got maybe a crystal or two of whatever solute um, uh, into the system. Watch what happens. You can hear it a little bit. Just, there goes the probe with the crystals. And that one little seed crystal stimulated the neighboring crystals to begin to form a three-dimensional lattice in which you see these spicules forming radially. Now, there's lots of other factors going on at once, but what you need to understand from this is that a solution that is super saturated tends to form crystals very easily. Um, and we'll talk about how you make one again. A super saturated solution is made by heating up a saturated solution, adding more solute, and then letting it cool back down to a room temperature very carefully. So flash forward to solubility. Um, in solubility graphing, uh, we have a, a group of, of solvent solutes here. Pardon me. The first seven or so are ionic. Then we have polar covalent sugar, and then we have three gases at four different temperatures, all in Celsius. And take note of this header that says solubility in grams per 100 grams of water. Um, just for a minute, pour over these data, and uh, let's talk about these four questions. Why do the last three substances in the table decrease solubility as temperature increases? Well, they're gases, and we learned that solubility decreases as you increase temperature for gases. Number two, describe a solution of 45 grams of KCl dissolved in 100 grams of water at 50 Celsius. Well, we're talking about potassium chloride here, which is located right there. And at 50 Celsius, we would expect to be able to dissolve 42.6 grams of that solute per 100 grams of water. Well, we dissolved 45 grams at that temperature. So if you were describing it, you would say it's super saturated. So let's call that S pin. Don't fail me now. Should put super because the we're not getting a great connection in here right now. So number two, super saturated solution because we have 45 grams dissolved, where our system should only be able to hold 42 and a half. Ew. So. A supersaturated solution is one in which you've dissolved more solute than a solution should be able to contain. Pardon the terrible hand, right? We'll try to rectify that. We're having some radio interference in here. So, um, describe a solution of 222 grams of silver nitrate dissolved in 100 grams of water at 20 Celsius. Okay. So, silver nitrate, if you look at the table, you see silver nitrate at 20 Celsius, you should be able to dissolve about. 222.0 grams per 100 mils of water. That would be considered saturated. Okay, so for number three, saturated. Number four, which solute has the highest solubility at 20 Celsius? So this is simple. You look at the table, find the thing that you can dissolve the most of at 20 degrees Celsius, and the answer you would find is sucrose, table sugar. And then again, look at 50 Celsius, which solid solute has the greatest solubility. And a quick dash through the table, you find silver nitrate has the greatest solubility. And that should tell you that solubility isn't necessarily linear. And we'll learn next year in AP Chemistry that, that those functions of those graphs tell, tell us um, about the way that these things are metabolized depending on uh, their properties. So let's move forward.
Okay, so solubility graph is what we just looked at, and we'll see a few of those, but predominantly what we're going to be looking at is solubility curves. And solubility curves are just what it looks like. You have plotted on the y-axis solubility in terms of mass, uh, and this is in milligrams, but it's usually in grams. It can be either, they're both okay, uh, in 100 mils of water versus uh, temperature in degrees Celsius. The line you see represents solubility re relative to temperature. So this line uh, that we see curving upward here, solubility versus temperature. So clearly solubility is dependent on temperature. We learned that yesterday or in the prior video number three. If your solubility value is exactly on a line, we would call your solution saturated. If your solubility value uh, solute mass per 100 mils of water is less than what you find on the curve line, then you have an unsaturated solution. If it's above the line, we would call it a supersaturated solution. Now, keep in mind, the supersaturated is a special case. It has to be purposefully created. It's not something that's, that's terribly common. Okay, It's going to result eventually in crystallization. So um, just understand that. So let's talk about gases for a moment. Gases behave differently than solutes that are solid in that, that as you increase temperature, you see solubility go down. So let's answer these questions. For gases, how does solubility compare to temperature in, as temperature increases? Solubility decreases. Fascinating. Is this a direct or inverse relationship? Well, since as you increase temperature, solubility decreases, you call it an, an inverse relationship. Finally, just a statement, the four gases in the graph all behave similarly. As temperature increases, this gas solubility decreases. But keep in mind why. As gases gain kinetic energy, the particles themselves are gaining kinetic energy. They're more able to overcome any external pressure, whatever system they are in is holding them. If it's an aqueous system, like blood, for example, you increase temperature, you can certainly allow that gas to escape. Now, there's other factors, too. We could also decrease the pressure around the system. That would also allow gas uh, to escape the system. But for now, we're talking about temperature versus solubility. So as you increase temperature, gas solubility decreases. So that leads us to the next graph set. We're frozen. Hold on. Solubility curves for solids. Which solute, um, and this you see the general trend for solid solutes in water is that as you increase temperature you should see an increase in solubility. Fantastic. So are there exceptions? Absolutely. Uh, there are several substances more than just uh, cerium sulfate which can result in a decreasing solubility as temperature goes up. But by and large, most ionic compounds, solubility will increase as temperature increases. Uh, number one, which solute dissolves best when water is 10 Celsius? So look at 10 Celsius. Which solute do you see? You can put the most of in 100 grams of water. Sodium nitrate appears to be our answer. Let's see if we're right. Yay, we win. Which solute has the lowest solubility at 60 Celsius? So if I look at my x-axis, find 60 Celsius, and I see cerium sulfate. Number three, which, well, sorry, how much potassium chloride dissolves in 100 mils of water at 45 Celsius? So now we're a little bit off our, our, our um, um, gradations or our uh, ax lines, but we see 45 Celsius at 100 mils of water Potassium chloride is this dark blue line. So we see roughly 40 grams of solute per 100 mils of water. Now sig figs here, you got one sig fig on the y-axis. So if you say 41, yeah, you're right. Okay, maybe too right. But we'll go ahead and allow that. Okay, so it's okay to put 41 or 42 or 43 here since you're allowed to estimate between 40 and 50. You know 40 point would be a valid answer if your dot was on the line. So 41 would be an acceptable answer also. How much potassium nitrate will dissolve at 500 mils of water at 45 Celsius? This is one of the ways this sub question can be a touch tricky, is that you have to understand that our axis, our y-axis is in terms of 100 mils of water. So at 45 Celsius, we would expect to be able to dissolve per 100 mils of potassium nitrate, or 100 mils of water, roughly 70 grams of potassium nitrate. But we don't have 100 mils of water. We have 500 mils of water. So a simple operation, 70 um, grams per 100 mils would be 70 times 5 per 500 mils. So 
we can expect to have a, um, a solubility in the neighborhood of about 350. Hold on, let me plug back in. I'm having some trouble. So we simply multiply by the same factor that our volume multiplied by 5. We multiply by our solubility. And we get roughly, of course, say 375. Fine. So you, you, we have um, a guesstimation of 75 for our solubility at 45 Celsius. Perfectly fine. Um, you, uh, and then we'll multiply that value by 5 to get 375. Question 5, if you stir 50 grams of potassium chlorate in 100 mils of water at 70 Celsius, will all of it dissolve? Okay, so let's go straight to our temperature, 70 Celsius, and then we'll find our potassium chlorate line, which is this orange-brown line. And we would expect to be able to dissolve 30 grams at that temperature. So if we put 50 grams in the solution, no, you will not immediately make a supersaturated solution. Keep in mind that in order to do that, you would have to increase temperature to a temperature in which you could dissolve 50, then allow it to cool to produce a supersaturated solution. Okay? If you simply drop 50 grams in 70, 70 Celsius water, you're going to dissolve 30 grams, and 20 grams will fall to the base of the container. So, no, it saturates at 30 grams. If you stir 100 grams of sodium nitrate in 100 mils of water, that's 20 Celsius, how many grams of it will not dissolve? So, sodium nitrate, 20 Celsius, 100 mils of water. So, no tricky math here. Let's look at 20 Celsius. Let's find sodium nitrate. It's this red line here. And you see that at 20 Celsius, we can dissolve 88-ish grams of uh, solute per 100 mils of water. So, if you stir 100 grams in, well, how many grams will not dissolve? 12 grams. It saturates at 88. So once you've put 88 grams in, the other 12 you've placed into the solution will not dissolve. Number 7, how many grams of sodium chloride will dissolve in 200 mils of 90 degrees Celsius water? At 90 Celsius, sodium chloride, this light blue line, dissolves about 40 grams, sorry, 100 grams of water, dissolves 40 grams of sodium chloride at 90 Celsius. So how many grams of sodium chloride dissolve in 200 mils of water? at this temperature, it would be double that value, so 80 grams of salt, sodium chloride at 200 mils of water. Number eight, you have 80 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 mils of water at 40 Celsius. Is this unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? Now, this is a scenario in which the solution's already created for you. You're not dropping in the 80 grams. It was already done. You know the temperature. What kind of solution do you have? You're assuming it's a solution. Potassium nitrate at 40 Celsius is the green line, so roughly 65 grams should dissolve to saturate, and if you have 80 grams, you would be above your line, that would be super. Let's say you have 50 mils of water as your solvent, how many grams of solid sodium chloride could you dissolve in 100 Celsius water? At 100 Celsius per 100 mils of water, we should dissolve 40 grams. So half that, vol that volume, we should be able to dissolve half the mass of solute. So 20 grams should dissolve. Number 10, how many grams of calcium chloride are needed to saturate 100 mils of water at 20 Celsius? 20 Celsius calcium chloride is this curvilinear line here, curvilinear one here, at roughly 75 grams per 100 mils of water. Winner. Oops, pardon me, that looks like we have a a rogue extra word, I apologize. You can ignore increases. And that concludes video number four over solubility graphs and curves. Stay tuned for video five, colloids and suspensions, colligative properties. I hope you've taken some solid notes. I know you'll have questions about solubility graphs and curves. There's lots of questions in the practice packet over it. Please make sure you're doing your diligence and taking solid notes. We'll see you in class.